Hi everyone, my name is Sophie Williams and, and today we are going to have the sixth session on Australian taxation. The topic which we are going to cover today is French benefit tax and it is a, it's a quite important topic in terms of Australian taxation. It is a topic which is of practical relevance as well because quite a few many times the employers provide a lot of French benefits to the employees and there is a bit of ambiguity and complexity around oh, like whether it will really be constituted as a fringe benefit and how to calculate the value of fringe benefit and like how to calculate tax etc so this session will resolve all your uh, queries around uh, fringe benefit uh, tax and will make your concepts clear around fringe benefits so let's see what we have in the next slides So before we proceed further, it is very important to understand what exactly is meant by fringe benefit. So a fringe benefit is any sort of benefit or payment which is made to an employee by the employer, which is apart from the salary or wages, which does not fall within the definition of salary and wages. So the first point of identification for identifying whether any particular payment made by the employer to the employee will constitute fringe benefit or not is to check that whether that payment would ordinarily fall within the definition of salary or wages. If yes, it will, if it will be classified under salary or wages in any sense, then that payment will not be regarded as a fringe benefit. It will be regarded as salary and wages only. However, if that particular expense or payment is not a part of salary and wages, then in that case, we need to consider and check whether it will fall under any of the category of fringe benefits. So this is the first point of check. Uh, now let me give you some examples of fringe benefits to uh, elaborate that what exactly is meant by the term fringe benefit. So let's say if an employer provides an employee a car for their personal or private use, then they, yes, that will constitute a fringe benefit. If let's say an employer provides free tickets to a concert to the employees, then that would also constitute as fringe benefit. Uh, let's suppose employer pays for gym membership of an employee, then that would also be regarded as fringe benefit payment. Or let's say an employer reimburses an employee for the child's school fees, which is really employee's personal expense, then in that case that would also be regarded as fringe benefits. So uh, this was just to give you an idea of what exactly is meant by fringe benefit. Uh, let's uh, proceed further and see uh, some important uh, points related to fringe benefit tax. So uh, before we proceed further and see uh, points about fringe benefit tax, it is important to know that what all things would not constitute as fringe benefit tax. So in order to make things clearer for you, so that you're able to remember and identify that whether any particular payment or a benefit provided by the employer to the employee will be regarded as fringe benefit or not, let us first have the exclusion list, which is that is, which consists of those payments or expenses or benefits, which will never be regarded as fringe benefits. So let's see what all those are. Uh, what are all those payments? First one is salary and wages. So yes, salary and wages is sal will be will fall under the definition of salary and wages, and it will not be regarded as fringe benefits. The second one is any super contribution made uh, by the employer for the benefit of employee will not be regarded as fringe benefit. Uh, the third one is any employee termination payments so yes those will also never be regarded as a fringe benefit uh, because they are all they are altogether taxable to the employee uh, under a separate category then we have amounts that are deemed as dividend under division 7 a this will also never be regarded as a fringe benefit and then we have shares purchased by an employee under employee share acquisition scheme so all these five kind of payments will never be regarded as fringe benefits. Uh, now let's go ahead and see uh, some important points about fringe benefit tax. So uh, when I say fringe benefit tax, it is a tax which is required to be paid by the employers on certain benefits that they provide to the employees or to the family of the employees or associates. Uh, so it is very important to understand and remember that fringe benefit tax is separate 
and different from income tax it is all together different tax so please don't get confused and think that it is a it is maybe a part of uh, uh, income tax only income tax is different fringe benefit tax is di- different and separate to income tax so uh, just as like you know income tax is calculated on the net taxable income of an of a person fringe benefit is calculated on the taxable value of fringe benefits so this is an important point to identify that yes fringe benefit tax is altogether a different tax than the income tax income tax is uh, income tax is payable on the net taxable income fringe benefit tax is payable on the taxable value of fringe benefits now another very important point to be remembered by you that is that uh, the, the fbt year is not just as just the same as the financial year which starts from 1st july and ends 30 june fbt year is different uh, runs different from the regular financial year and the fbt year starts from 1st april and ends 31st march so if let's say for fbt year 2022 the year would start on 1st april 2021 and end on 31st march 2022 so that's how the fbt year runs it runs from 1st april to 31st march so please don't confuse get confused and please don't forget that it is not the same as the regular financial year which runs from july to june it runs from 1st april to 31st march those employers who are subject to fbt who pay fringe benefits taxable fringe benefits to their employees are required to file a fbt return with the australian taxation office and uh, employers can claim deduction for any fringe benefits that they are paying for the benefit of their employees and they are also entitled to claim any gst for the credit of any gst paid on those expenses so this was uh, all about uh, fringe benefit tax some points to remember that you must remember and you must know Uh, let's go ahead and see what are the various categories of fringe benefits so in all there are total nine types of fringe benefits uh, not all of them are as uh, commonly used and not all of them are as uh, like popular uh, or maybe commonly used or of or of equal significance some of them are like more commonly used and you must know about them in detail so we'll cover them in detail and other ones which are less significant ones or are, are of less relevance or are less like they're practically used very very often only then we are we'll cover them as well but we'll cover them a bit shortly so uh, let's see uh, what are the types of fringe benefits we have car fringe benefits as the first category of uh, fringe benefit then we have entertainment related fringe benefit we have expense payment fringe benefit debt waiver fringe benefit loan fringe benefit housing fringe benefit living away from home allowance fringe benefit and then we have property fringe benefit and last one is residential fringe benefit so this this was nine types of fringe benefits that we have please don't get confused and scared that you i don't remember there are so many categories you will gradually re- remember them as you uh, get to understand what is covered under each category of so fringe benefit and what is exempt as well so uh, let's go ahead and see what is covered under each category of fringe benefit and let's understand in brief about each category of fringe benefit so uh, the first one is car fringe benefit and this is also the most commonly used uh, a fringe benefit the most common type of fringe benefit which is often provided by the employers and organizations to its employees and this is like this this one is of the most in in terms of in in a practical real life situations this one is the most relevant relevant and most commonly applied one so it is very important to uh, to know everything about this one in detail so let's see what we have under car fringe benefit if the employer provides either owned car or leased car to an employee for the private use of the employee then it will be regarded as car fringe benefit that is being paid by the employer to the employee it's very important to remember here that the car should have been provided for the private or personal use of the employee then only it will be regarded as a fringe benefit if the employer is providing car for the work related use by the employee then of course it is not really for the benefit of employee it is for the for work related use 
in that case it will not be regarded as a fringe benefit only and only when the car is being provided for for a uh, private or personal use of the employee then in that case it will give rise to car fringe benefit there might also be situation when let's say uh, the employer has provided a car to the employee and it's, it is like the uses mixed some like some uses work related and the some uses related to uh, personal use then in that case like you know percentage will be determined that how much percentage is related to work related use and how much percentage is related to uh, personal use and then the, the, the value of taxable fringe benefit will be prorated accordingly depending upon the uh, business use percentage or work related use percentage and the private use percentage uh, so let's see what we have further here for in relation to car fringe benefit so for the purpose of car fpg uh, it is to be noted that uh, a vehicle will be regarded as car for the purpose of fvt only and only when it is vehicle is a vehicle with a carrying capacity less than 1 ton and the vehicle is designed to carry less than 9 passengers if let's say the employer is providing any other any other vehicle apart from uh, the vehicle which uh, under this definition that like it should have cap- carrying capacity less than 1 ton or it is designed to carry like less than 9 passengers if the vehicle provided by the employer does not fall within this criteria then it will not really be regarded as a car and it will not give rise to car fringe benefit but then it will have to be evaluated that it would under which exactly under which fringe benefit though that benefit would fall but in that case if the vehicle does not uh, fall within the criteria of car provided un- under the fvt then in that case it will not be regarded as car fringe benefit also uh, also uh, it is very important to know that there are certain uh, car benefits that are exempt so let's see what are those car benefits so in case the private use is limited to travel between home and work or maybe the private use is very less it's really minor and infrequent or let's say the private use is just incidental to the work related travel which the employee is doing in that case uh, the car fringe benefit is exempt So this was all about car fringe benefit. Let's go ahead and see in detail what are the other categories of fringe benefits are. The other very important type of uh, fringe benefit is entertainment related fringe benefit. This is also uh, in terms of practical am- application. This also has a uh, quite a uh, 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 quite significant uh, relevance because uh, this type of fringe benefit is also provided Uh, quite a lot by the employers and companies to the employees and then they need to calculate the taxable value of entertainment related fringe benefits so let's see what exactly is covered in the entertainment related fringe benefits so if the employer provides meals and drinks to the employees at social functions like christmas parties or any farewell parties outside the office premises or maybe at any sporting events or any sightseeing or tours or holidays which are conducted by the employer on any weekends or any recreation provided by the employer to the employee any form of amusement or sport or any other leisure purposes so any meal and drinks provided uh, provided at all these social events or social functions or uh, leisure leisure events or any holidays etc will constitute as entertainment related fringe benefit being provided by the employer to the employee and the employer will be required to pay fringe benefit tax on same let's go ahead and see what is the next category of fringe benefit so the next cat- category is expense payment fringe benefit this category of fringe benefit would arise when an employer either reimburses the employee or the associate of employee for any expense either they either they reimburse them or either they pay directly to a third party for their expense for the benefit of employee so uh, let me give us a few examples of what exactly would fall under expense payment fringe benefits so under expense payment fringe benefit if the employer pays for uh, pays any expense either directly or maybe either reimburses the uh, employee or may be paid to a third party any expense which is actually related to the employee it is a personal expense of the employee and the employer either reimburses it or pay, pays for that expense to a third party for the benefit of employee in that case it will be regarded as expense payment fringe benefit 
and examples are let's say the employer pays for home internet of the employee home internet expense or maybe employer makes payment of personal credit card of the employee or maybe the employer pays health insurance premium for the employee directly to the insurance company or maybe the employer bills self education uh, expenses of the employee or maybe like reimburses them to the employee then all such payments will constitute as expense payment fringe benefit being paid by the employer to the employee Uh, so as of now we have covered three main types of fringe benefits in detail the first one was car fringe benefit and then we had entertainment related fringe benefit and then we had expense payment fringe benefit there are few other categories of uh, fringe benefits as well apart from these three main categories uh, they are of bit less relevance because because they are like in the practical real life situation they are uh, they are they apply uh, very often only they don't Apply very frequently, and like they are not very common, but still it is important to know and understand what these types of fringe benefits are, and if there are any ex exemptions, then we'll cover those as well. So let's go ahead and see what are, what these what are what are the other category of fringe benefits apart from car, entertainment related, and expense payment fringe benefit. So when an employer waives the debt owed by the employee, it is called debt waiver fringe benefit. So let's say I have taken a debt of let's say uh, $5000 from my employer and let's say the employer after 3 months I'm like, like unable to pay or pay or pay off the loan and I like tell my employer that yes like I'm really short on funds and I cannot pay it and the employer decides to waive it off okay then my employer says that okay you don't need to repay it back to me that's I have waived it off in that case this waiving off of the loan will also be regarded as a fringe benefit which is being paid by the given by the employer to the employee and it will fall under the category of debt waiver fringe benefit now let's see which which is the next category so when an employer provides an interest free loan or a low interest loan to an employee then it is known as loan fringe benefit now uh, a question arises here that like how exactly to identify that whether the loan is an in, as a, is a low interest loan or not So uh, the Australian Taxation Office has set up certain benchmark rates of interest and if the rate of interest on which is being charged by the employer from the employee is quite is lower than that benchmark rate of interest then the loan will be regarded as a low interest loan and yes it will fall into the category of loan fringe benefit so any interest free loan or low interest loan provided by the employer to the employee will will be regarded as a loan fringe benefit another one is like when an employer provides employee with a rent free accommodation or accommodation at a reduced rent and that accommodation is the employee's usual place of residence in that case it will be regarded as housing fringe benefit the next one is when an employer provides at least two meals to an employee to the either their workplace or their regular place of residence along with the accommodation facility then this uh, combination of fringe benefits would fall under the category of board fringe benefit uh, we have a few other category of fringe benefits as well in the upcoming si slides so let's see what they are uh, okay so the other category of fringe benefit is living away from home allowance fringe benefit so what exactly is this kind of uh, allowance of fringe benefit is paid so let's say if an employee is moved or like shifted or like they are asked by the employer to work from a different location from a different like you know uh, place which is which is like you know apart from the usual place of residence and because of like because of uh, this because of this thing the employee is employee is supposed to live at a at a different place than the usual place of uh, residence and they are required to bear some additional cost or any inconvenience in that case the employer is like you know uh, the purpose of this allowance is to cover up for those additional costs or that that inconvenience which is borne by the employee because of like you know working from a place which is other than the usual place of residence and this category of fringe benefit is known as living away from home allowance fringe benefits so let me give you a practical 
example of this so let's say if my uh, my uh, place is at melbourne i usually i uh, visit my i work from my employer's office in melbourne it's very close to my place and let's say my employer says that yes no for 3 months you are shifted to a remote area and you got you got to work from there and you need to make your own accommodation arrangements in that case of course i will have to move from my usual place of residence at melbourne and move to a rural place for 3 months and like look for a new accommodation etc so of course i will have to bear some additional cost so the so that my employer may pay in that in such situation employer may may offer me to pay some uh, living away from home allowance fringe benefit uh, in order to cover the additional cost or the inconvenience which i am being which i am bearing uh, because of my uh, because uh, related in relation to my work and this category of fringe benefit will fall under the category of living away from home allowance fringe benefit let's see what is the next category So when the employer provides an employee with any goods property items either free of cost or at a discount then such a benefit would be known as property fringe benefit uh certain examples of property fringe benefit can be like let's say the employer transfers the shares or maybe land building or any other items such as television for the personal use of the employee then they will be construed as uh, providing property fringe benefit to the employee so now we have covered all the fringe benefits except the last one which is the residual fringe benefit so this is an interesting one so any other fringe benefit which does not fall in any of the eight categories which we covered so far will fall under the category of residual fringe benefit Uh, so this was all about the different categories of fringe benefits that we have uh it is uh, just to reiterate i'll uh, like to tell you that car fringe benefit entertainment related fringe benefit and expense payment fringe benefit are the most common commonly used and applied ones in practical real life situations however uh, one like you know there are times that that like where the other categories may apply as well so it is important for you to have a brief idea about all the types of fringe benefits and for the three most important ones you must know them in detail and even the method how to work out the taxable value uh, in the upcoming slides we'll uh, cover how we'll cover a session on how to calculate the taxable value of these benefits Uh, and and also cover some examples how it is being done in practical real life situations so that was all about today's session i hope you found it informative and you enjoyed the session and in case if you have any questions in relation to any of the topics or points that we covered today then you are free uh, please feel free to reach back to us we'll be happy to help you with any of your queries thank you and have a good day